I will tell you from experience that getting diagnosed with a brain tumor is life-changing. Your whole lifestyle and purpose changes in an instant. It was when I visited the ENT for a cyst on my nose that the CAT scan revealed a benign brain tumor. On July 1st, I had a craniotomy. The five and a half hour procedure removed almost 80% of the tumor. When I woke, I remember the extreme pain, double vision, and limited mobility. I didn't care. I thank God just to be alive. Before he had surgery, he was just uh, easy to be with and very active and outgoing and just was always excited for the next adventure. Always on the go, very active in boxing and surfing with his sons and really making every day a day filled with activity. And then surgery came and I wanted to be there for him. And so I spent the week with him and it was like night and day seeing him go from this very adventurous active person to someone who couldn't even barely open his eyes, couldn't walk, and he couldn't even brush his own teeth. So for me, it was a very emotional week watching someone who had to struggle through this. The first two weeks I was home, the physical therapist worked with me on my strength and balance issues. I learned to use a walker for the first month, and over the next four weeks, moved to walking sticks and then graduated to a cane. My physical therapist suggested yoga as a way to continue focusing on my balance, both mentally and physically. Through research, I learned I wasn't the only one who turned to yoga as a way of recovery. The first time I met Alex, he was uh, sitting in a beach chair <laughs> under an umbrella at um, uh, Lake Eola for the class. And then um, he ex ex explained to me that uh, he had just gotten done with a brain surgery, and um, which I thought the fact that you are even able to speak and say that, I mean, I, you know, I'm not quite sure how the brain surgery thing goes, but it's, that's amazing. And um, the next uh, Sunday, Alex came out with his walker and, um, and just modified and just started breathing and making little gentle movements and took breaks when he needed to. And uh, he's been coming over since. For me, especially since I went through a severe injury with my knee and I couldn't do a lot of lifting as well. Um, so yoga, that's when yoga actually became the biggest part of my life. I'm a big advocate for body weight because there's a lot of people that have a lot of different ailments and, and can't lift the heavy weights and so yoga is a, is a great alternative, body weight exercises. Um, it's surprising just how how fit you can get just by using your body. So like we're always traveling around the world, you don't have access to a lot of different things. So in order to keep strong, um, doing yoga, body weight exercises are, are great for you. During my research on yoga poses and their impacts on recovery, I happened across articles that claimed as a Christian, participation in yoga was demonic and was a conflict of interest within the church. I couldn't understand the competing opinions of these articles. In my mind, I was simply using a well-known practice for my rehabilitation. Now let me say this, yoga positions were not designed by your local fitness instructor. They were designed, they were created with demonic intent to open you up to demonic power because Hinduism is demonic. I don't have anything against doing the stretching, doing the exercising, um, but when you start to do the mantras and do the meditation, um, Bible clearly says that we meditate on the Word of God daily. And so that's the thing I would try to tell you to be careful with is because it can easily sway you away from your faith. And But if you want to stretch and you want to do those things, I would just tell you be very careful because it, we don't wrestle, you know, the Bible says we don't wrestle against, um, in the physical, we wrestle against spiritual warfare. It's uh, principalities and powers and rulers in dark places. So that's, I, I'll just, you know, refer to the word, what the word says. 
if you type yoga into your internet, into the internet search engine, Google or whatever you use, you would be amazed at the churches that you pull up that are practicing yoga instead of going to the house of God for light and salvation and understanding of the word of God, you're going to walk into a hell hole of darkness. If you're religious, you can't do yoga? Question mark. Um, yoga is not a religion. It is a lifestyle. It is a practice. It's um, being mindful of ourselves, being mindful of others, community, um, and health. That's it. It's not a religion. I think it's kind of your time where you get a lot more clarity on things. So if you're struggling or you're stressed out, it's a, it's yourself. It's your time to just like be one and just to relax and just kind of let things flow and to kind of just be, you know, have that mental clarity and just be like, okay, everything's going to be okay. Today's going to be an amazing day. Um, so I mean, everybody looks at yoga in different ways and, and exercise in different ways and how it helps them. So I'm always like, if it makes you feel good, do it. Over the first six months, yoga helped in my recovery and I slowly started to work again with the help of an assistant. I was transitioning to a healthier lifestyle in which yoga became a part of my daily routine. Yoga in the eastern part of the world is reportedly based around a particular religion that believes in thousands of gods and reincarnation. The whole point of a religion is to tie or bind together your beliefs, ceremonies, or rules, centering on a supernatural being or beings. Traditions are passed down through families or communities that build a foundation for Christians to practice. I was raised Christian, but it unsettles me to think that I may be practicing and opening myself up to demonic influence. You have to go to the origins of what yoga is. And if it's religious based, spiritual based, which it is, you have to decide, what, are you gonna follow that spirituality or are you going to follow Christ? If you're a Christian, you have to follow Christ. And, and the Bible clearly says in Romans 12, one and two that we present our bodies as a living sacrifice and that we, we're by the renewing and transforming of our mind. Um, I know yoga uh, actually goes the other way. Yoga actually says devoid your, your mind and bring yourself down to almost nothing. Well, me in the spiritual sense, that leaves you open for attack. So there's clearly a separation. Listen, you cannot separate yoga from its Hindu roots. If it's truly Christian, it can't be yoga. All forms of yoga involve occult assumptions. Even hatha yoga, which is often presented as a merely physical discipline. To that end, Christians should stay away from yoga because of its demonic roots. Participating in it at any level is potentiating the opening up of your life, your home, your situation to the demonic. Going to yoga was such an adventure because it was something he struggled to even get to. It took us a long time to walk to the park and to get there. And even though he brought his walker, um, he was determined. And I think that motivation from his boys and from his friends and family is really what pushed him to get better and to try yoga as a form of exercise and rehab rehabilitation. I think watching him in the poses that I knew he could easily do, I didn't realize how much of a struggle it would be for a simple chair pose or a simple downward dog. Those things weren't as easy for him after the surgery. In fact, it was a big struggle. And oftentimes he couldn't even do anything that had blood rushing to his head. Um, but he was able to stretch and he was able to rest his mind. And I think that is really a key for his recovery is that he was able to focus on what his body needed and what he needed for his body. So if you can participate in a class for physical exercise without partaking in the philosophy of the class, um, then, then I would say it's okay because it's like any other physical exercise. But if you find yourself starting to partake of any kind of new age ideas or Eastern philosophy, time to get out of the class, go ride your bike. I would just say, to be careful. Um, spiritually, um, I understand you want to do what you want to do for your life and for um, your situation. And I just say, be, you know, you should, if you're a Christian, you should be praying. Um, you should be praying to your God, praying um, that God help you and heal you in that. 
um, and not be swayed because that's the main concern. I'd like to pray for you because, um, you know, the Bible says that, you know, when people need healing, you pray for them. And, and so I'm praying that through whatever you're going to do, because the, the Bible also says faith without works is dead. So you, you're doing, and I'm, I, I commend you on that. So keep doing and just, but stay within your faith. That's what I would say. Because of my practicing yoga, today I am able to continue with my photography and videography in a limited capacity. My recovery from brain surgery has been tedious and long, and in November 2019, I had a setback with gamma knife radiation to stop the growth of the remaining 20% of my tumor. Regardless, I continue my faith in yoga and practice daily, for it has become my new lifestyle. I am living proof that practicing yoga has medically benefited me as it has lowered my blood pressure, enhanced my flexibility, strength, and balance. I may never be perfect, but practicing yoga is perfect for me.